Yonder cloud that's almost in shape of a camel. By the mass, and it's like a camel indeed. Methinks it's like a weasel. It is backed like a weasel. Or like a whale. Very like a whale. Let's consider a brief analogy, or perhaps we could even call this a thought experiment. Suppose you were standing outside, staring at the clouds, noting that certain clouds resemble trees or automobiles, animals, uh, or a variety of other things. Then suppose that a meteorologist who has a background in nephology, which is to say the study of clouds, walks up beside you and says, quote, it seems to me that you could also see an elephant in that cloud, end quote. I would argue that it would be a wee bit imprudent for you to declare that his meteorological or nephological expertise imbues that lighthearted suggestion with gravitas. Uh, I would advise against leaping to the conclusion that the suggestion amounts to a definitive scholarly declaration that someone consciously and deliberately shaped one of those clouds into the form of an elephant. But most importantly, if other interested parties ask which cloud was being referred to, you definitely should not respond with something dismissive along the lines of, don't worry about it, the expert has spoken, the matter is closed. Shh. The last thing you should do is try to turn a lighthearted suggestion into some sort of indisputable dogma. A number of people are under the impression that Professor David Bunis a scholar of Jewish languages at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, has confirmed that Hebrew in the Solitreo script appears on at least one pew at First African Baptist Church in Savannah, Georgia. And moreover, that Professor Bunis has even confirmed a rather complex sentence on that pew, roughly along the lines of, Take a grasp of Yah or God, Israel, with a bass voice. This impression that people have begins with the panel discussion that took place on the Boom Church Atlanta channel back on Sunday, November 22nd. However, if you watch the show carefully, only one email from Professor Bunis was displayed, which is the email you see on the screen now. Notice that the email never mentions the Solitreo script and it does not endorse any sentence. Rather, it suggests only a single word. Now, I realize that at this point, some might wish to object that maybe Professor Bunis said it was Solitreo script, and maybe he endorsed the complex sentence uh, that Pastor Majors put forth in other emails, which is to say emails that Pastor Majors didn't share. However, <laughs> others might wonder, if that's the case, why would Pastor Majors refrain from sharing those emails? You know, I would respectfully understand if, as a matter of principle, he chose not to share any emails. But the fact is that he did share one email, and it begs the question. If he had emails with more clear and explicit confirmations of his position, why would he not share those emails? Still others might argue that we don't need to see other emails, as that one email that we did see is clear enough. They might argue that the word also implies somehow that he agrees with everything shown to him previously, which is to say the idea that Solitreo script appears on the pew, as well as Benaiah's uh, interpretation of the markings forming a complex sentence. With all due respect, I feel that many others would not be so confident about that. Truthfully, I, I must confess, it would be unfortunate if all we had to work with were competing interpretations of a single, somewhat vague email or speculations about what may or may not have been said in emails we haven't seen. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one who would prefer more clarity here. Well, <laughs> with that in mind, permit me to share that an email was sent to Professor Bunis to get some clarification on the impression some are under. And as luck would have it, he replied. And on your screen is his reply to that email. Permit me to read it to you. Quote, thanks for your questions. No, I didn't say the script was solitreo. But I did say that it looked to me like the inscription could say Yisrael in regular square script. Of course, I may be wrong. Best wishes, David. End quote. The first thing that needs to be noted is that he did not take the position that Solitreo script appears on the pews. Second, 
It seems clear that he did not suggest any content beyond what we saw in the one email which was shared during the panel discussion back on November 22nd, which is to say he did not endorse a complex sentence. Rather, he only suggested a single word. Third, regarding that single word, it's worthwhile to ask this question. Why would Dr. Bunis add the caveat that he may be wrong, even in the suggestion of that one word? The reason why is because he's not offering a definitive conclusion from his you know, scholarly expertise. Rather, he's offering what might be one possible interpretation of a set of vague markings, which can be interpreted in a variety of ways. That careful note also works against those who desire to take his previous words to mean that the matter is closed and that no one should ask questions or try to explore the matter for themselves. Also, it's my understanding that Dr. Bunis has also written to Pastor Majors, making it clear that he did not think Solitreo's script appears on the pew, uh, that, which he saw pictures of, and that Yisrael is the extent of what he thinks might appear on that pew. It's my sincere hope that Pastor Majors might share more from his correspondences with Dr. Bunis, though, of course, I can see that he's under no obligation to do so, and I will respect his decision if he decides not to share more. Nonetheless, I, I hope he shares more, you know, including any emails he might have received since that show on the 22nd. Uh, whatever the case, let's return to the question of what Dr. Bunis was looking at. This is tacitly the angle from which Benaiah's two public posts examine the relevant pew. Now, as a, declaim, as a disclaimer, I'm not saying that you know, either Benaiah's private examinations or his future posts on the subject have to be limited to this vantage point. Rather, I'm simply saying that what he shared publicly and what Pastor Majors embraced during that Boom Church panel discussion back on the 22nd viewed the pew from this angle and proposed a string of characters moving from left to right, not right to left, but left to right, reading Kof Chet Chet, Yod Yod, Bet Bet Chet. Now, where might one find Israel in that? It seems obvious to me that Professor Bunis did not see anything when looking at the pew from this angle. Rather, he viewed it from another angle, which is 180 degrees different. Looking at it like this, and as I had speculated in my previous video, Professor Bunis was basing his suggestion on similarities to characters in the Ashuri script, not the Solitreo script, but the Ashuri script, which is also known as the square script or the block script, you know, what is now the standard Hebrew script. And there are two portions that look like an Ashuri Sin and an Ashuri Lamed. So how do you get Israel from that? Well, it looks like there might be one character before the sin, or what's proposed to be the sin, and two characters before the Lamed. Some might not feel that's a lot to work with, but we should note that any experienced reader has a long history of inferring words from partial data. That is to say, the reason any adult, including all of you who are listening in now, the reason any adult who has been literate for many years can read as fast as they do is because when they read, they don't stop to carefully inspect every letter in every word. Rather, they're often only seeing parts of each word and inferring what word it is from the way that fleeting glimpse matches familiar patterns, you know, or patterns they're familiar with. Uh, most of the time we get it right, but this also explains why most of us occasionally read things wrongly, experiencing a sort of sleight of mind where after a double take of sorts, we realize a word or phrase we thought we saw a second ago is not actually on the page. Now, some viewers might have felt that the scenario at the beginning of this video where a meteorologist offers a light suggestion regarding the shape of a cloud in the sky was disanalogous. But I would propose that the process of mentally associating cloud forms with familiar shapes is related to the process of mentally associating some vague markings with familiar strings of characters. In either case, the mind is pulling up something one is accustomed to based on select features or common patterns or familiar patterns. But the main point of the, analog the analogy is this. If someone says, quote, it seems to me that you could see, end quote, something, you know, it's at least possible that, that with that sort of language, they're trying to convey to you the room for doubt and uncertainty or the margin of error, as it were. Uh, it can be somewhat lighthearted, it, it, a lighthearted suggestion, as I said earlier, uh, regarding one interpretation from amongst multiple possible interpretations. That said, I'll close with this. 
Moving forward, I would ask that we please dispense with these attempts to treat suggestions like dogma. There have been people recently who have been arguing along the lines of the experts have spoken, the matter is closed, let any mere student of the language step back and remain silent. I mean, that's essentially what people have been saying to me. And they were saying that under the influence of some of the videos that are out there, but Rather than looking for excuses to attempt to shut down dialogue and avoid further examination of the pews, I would ask that we continue to examine the markings thereon and to discuss what we feel we see, where we agree and where we disagree. I think that's the best way to move forward. Treat it like an academic subject and just share what we, how we understand it. And in that regard, that's why I've been so appreciative of the efforts of Benaiah Israel. And I hope that others follow in his footsteps in offering their interpretations. On that note, I really look forward to the thoughts of others, so please do share your comments. God bless.